invest in daughters, sisters, and wives. They're gonna change our lives. In women, in girls. They'll make a better world. Invest in her. And now here's your host, Catherine Gray. Welcome to this week's episode of Invest in Her. I'm your host, Catherine Gray, founder of She Angel Investors and co-founder of the She Angels Foundation. As you know, we are all about funding women and connecting them to funding resources. And that's exactly what my guest is all about. She is the founding executive director of the NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center. Welcome to the show, Nicola Corzine. Hi, Nicola. Hi, it's such a treat to be here. Thanks for having me. You are so welcome. And I said, your title is a mouthful, but I got it. I got it. <laughs> you got it. In what? It's great. And, you know, I'm so excited to have you on today. You have, you know, I was reading your bio. It's such an amazing background in this whole spectrum of helping entrepreneurs to learn about you know, organization and funding and all of the things that they need in order to be successful. So I am super excited to share this resource with our listeners who I know will be eager to hear about what you're doing at the uh, NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center. Um, First, let's talk about your background to getting here to where you launched this. Uh, So, you know, 15 years in uh, strategic you know, programming of helping entrepreneurs and investors to learn more. Uh, what what prompted you to get into this arena? I know you, you actually were involved with two or three startups before you got into the investment world, right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well, I always start by saying, as with everything in entrepreneurship, it's certainly not a straight and a predictable path, but it would be dull if it was. So I think that's absolutely okay. My father was an entrepreneur and I was actually born in England and um, he was an incredible leader in sharing and shaping my ideas around the importance of finding the problem solver in all of us. And I think growing up in that environment, when he moved to stateside relatively young, I was nine when I came out here and, and being brought up in that environment, I had no idea how much of a gift it was. But as a result of that, it allowed me to really lean in, be curious, trying to identify how could I be a part of solutions that were needed in our communities, in our world, not always through a for-profit lens, but a lot of the time in saying, you know, we all have an opportunity to take an action in this world to make it a little bit better. And, and seeing where those problems arise and leaning in and asking for help from others who were mission aligned with us is, is a great part of that story. Um, so I started my, my my first startup, ironically, in the UK, I, I went back to college to university there and um, I wanted some spending money, in all honesty, to travel around Europe. And when I called up parents and, and asked for that money, they rightfully reminded me I should probably either get a job or start something that would enable me to have that kind of opportunity. And so I looked around. I wasn't inspired by the job market at that time, but I was inspired by a lot of market changes that were shifting around GSM and telecommunications at that stage. And so knowing nothing about it, but always being curious, uh, managed to get something underway. And um, that was my first of three. As always, um, not everyone landed in the ways that I thought. The first one was a great standalone uh, business. We didn't raise any outside capital. The second one was venture backed. It ended up getting acquired by Microsoft. And because, of course, I thought I knew everything from that second one, I did it one more time, realized I knew nothing, raised way too much money. It blew up in glorious fashion, and I could lament for way longer than this podcast would allow everything I would do differently if I could do it again. Um, But I went back and I I did ask my backers from the second company, you know, a little bit of that moment of, I don't know what I don't know. And and I'm, I'm having kind of this personal crisis of what should I be when I grow up? Because I don't think I know enough to be an entrepreneur that is responsible for people's salary, for payroll, for the things that I felt a burden to perform towards at that time. And they'd started the first time fund in Palo Alto and for some wonderful and crazy reason invited me over to help them find incredible entrepreneurs uh, to back. And I kind of had a moment to pause and go, I'm sorry, that's a job? Like, you're going to pay me to do that, to go find incredible entrepreneurs that I'm drawn to? I would love this. And a that year sounds later, like an amazing job. <laughs> yeah. It was incredible. And a year later, I got recruited to co-lead Band of Angels, where I spent 10 years um, leading the world, uh, the oldest angel investment group in America. I uh, saw that. That must have been just an incredible experience. And It was. It was. You know, um, 
all, you know, every day I encounter all these entrepreneurs and they have the most amazing ideas and they're struggling. And I'm so glad we're having this conversation yeah. because they want to know how to get into that arena. You know, most entrepreneurs are just like you were when you started out. They had a great, they have a great idea. They just don't know how to raise the money or execute it. And that's why I think your entrepreneur center is so key. And I can see that from your own experience, you saw how needed these services are. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, from, from band, I think the thing that was most transformative in my career that I didn't realize at the time, I was invited to be part of Startup America, which under the Obama administration really sought to look at talent networks across America and realize how disconnected we all were, but that it didn't have to be that way. And, that's and, what, and what talent and ideas and innovations we were leaving on we the side of the road, we right? All we all yeah. suffer when innovation doesn't rise and it's not equitable in that environment. And so when I heard what NASDAQ spent foundation was committed to doing. I just thought it was the chance of a lifetime to really build a startup to end all startups that could really be the global home for accessible entrepreneurship worldwide. And now we've supported 70,000 entrepreneurs from 120 countries, 51% women, 64% entrepreneurs of color. And we're really about the sustainability of the individuals behind the businesses. We love all businesses equally. They're all fabulous ideas and we want them all to succeed, but we really love and really believe in the people behind those businesses. And we're here first and foremost for them. And, you know, I was so curious to ask you, I know my listeners will want to know, is there a specific type of genre that you all get behind or is it any kind of business? Every single business. We just, I love hearing <laughs> that. I always hear tech, tech, tech. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, but there's people in, you know, consumer products and, you know, all these different verticals. I'm like, oh, I'm so happy to hear that. Yeah. And, and, you know, and I'm sure you, you've seen this and heard this from other guests too. The amount of learning that happens when we're not siloed in a specific sector is extraordinary. When we can bring in near peers together in collaborative environments, working against different industry stacks, our eyes open up. The, the opportunity and the challenge with entrepreneurs is it becomes very tunnel focused, right? You have to be, you have to do that because of all the things that are in front of you. But at the same time, if we lift our heads up and we look at how others are tackling things like raising capital, scaling companies, dealing with supply chain, working through talent issues, all of these things can give us more information to be able to make more informed decisions on how we wish to build a company of, of our values and our goals. So who can apply? Is it um, somebody that just has an idea, but they haven't launched the business yet? Or do they have to have already launched the business? Do they have to be doing a certain amount of business in order to apply? What's the criteria? Yeah, it's a great question. We are a nonprofit. So our mission every single day is to be there across the entire continuum of entrepreneurship from aspiring entrepreneurs, whether you know young or coming into it in their 60s, all the way through to those late stage high growth companies that are needing that kind of support. The road of an entrepreneur is perhaps one of the most lonely and hard ones out there. And it takes a village. We know that now more in entrepreneurship than ever before. So really being able to support and be available wherever our entrepreneurs need us in whatever sector, at whatever stage in that journey is how we are here for them. This is incredible. <laughs> uh, you know, this is music to my ears because I'm always looking for resources like yours for all the entrepreneurs I talk to every week. I just yesterday was with some in a specific clothing niche. Um, they've all been struggling for years. It's a niche that needs to exist. And I really want to cheer them on. And I, you know, I've already forwarded to them the information about your center because mm -hmm. I think you could really help them take it to the next level. Um, and, and so I'm super excited that we connected today. Um, the rest of your background, uh, you know, is that you have such an expertise about angel investing, you know, having been with Acorn, having been with Band of Angels, um, being involved in it yourself. I know you speak at places like um, Duke and, um, uh, sorry, I just blanked. Um, <laughs> Okay. Wharton, Wharton. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Wharton and uh, Stanford and, and all of these high profile universities um, about angel investing. What is your take on why we don't have enough women and people of color and LGBTQ investors? Because we, I think you and I both can agree that people do tend to invest in people they identify with, and we need more uh, variety of people actually doing the investing and making the investment decisions. How do we get more 
people involved uh, in being angel investors? What, what's the answer to that? Yeah, well, a thousand percent agree with that sentiment all the way through. You know, it, it, it is, um, I won't say wicked problem, but it's definitely wicked problem territory when we look at sort of where the challenges with the wealth gap are showing up, even in angel capital and access to, you know, high risk investing and the education and the support of like how we do that. There are some incredible organizations. One of my favorites we're working on in a, a, a deep collaboration project right now is IFL. This is the Institute for Entrepreneurial Leadership. I just um, was on their uh, panel for WOCON. Oh, we, really? Okay. I was, I was summit. still amazing, right? Jill so Johnson's amazing. Yeah. Yes, I'm behind them 100%. And, you know, she's bringing forward, um, just like Pipeline, a commitment to really education and acceleration of, you know, Black women, angel investors in America and beyond. Um, but I think to your point, it, it starts by realizing angel investing historically had an interpretation that you needed to go uh, build a company or be a part of, of the C-suite of a company, get to a point of exit, do it two or three times, and then one became an angel investor. And the reality is that was how Silicon Valley was formed 50 years ago. But when we look at angel investors of a white male uh, background, that has no longer been the status quo for, for the last couple of decades. But we haven't yet translated that over to our women and, and honestly our entrepreneurs of color. So I think we have a little bit of catch up to say, where are the incredible women that are inside of companies inside of organizations that are at a point in their life where they have subject matter expertise, a commitment to mentorship, a desire to take on this high risk activity called angel investing and surround them with resources, access to education, knowledge bands, just like the show is to start to have more of an intentional dialogue of where would I go to learn about this and how could I assess whether it's right for me? I think we have not done a great job of inviting women and inviting honestly, uh, entrepreneurs of color into that conversation historically. Uh, we are you know, starting to see more groups emerge around that commitment, around that prioritization. When we were, when I was at Band, you know, we had 15% of our member base that were women. Now, I, sadly, we were like, that's better than average, but it is still such a long, long way to go. And yet when we looked at our commitment to building a diverse portfolio, to your point, we didn't have equal representation of making sure in the boardroom, those incredible women, those incredible entrepreneurs of color were being supported by like-minded representatives at a first and early stage board layer two. So I think it takes, again, back to that, it takes a village. Every single one of us knows people within our network. If we are an angel or if we have pursued angel, even if we've opted out of it and we're on a bit of a sabbatical to say, you know, I wonder if it would be helpful for me to have a conversation, for me to connect more intentionally with others who might be thinking about that, to share and make sure that they know where the resources are to explore that. Uh, and to really be very intentional at building up a pipeline. It's top down and bottoms up, just like with a lot of the board diversity work that's going on right now. It's incredible to see women getting placed on boards, but we have to invest in the funnel to start with, as well as just continuing to go to sort of the same names that we're starting to see show up. One, because there's clearly not enough hours in the day for those incredible talents to go on every single board that needs their representation. So we need to be investing at the private layer. There's no earlier private layer than sort of that angel capital layer. Absolutely. I love everything that you said. So right on, you know, uh, but we're moving in that direction. And I think one of the most exciting things that I'm seeing is there's more and more female founded funds. And I find the majority of those funds are focused on investing in women, LGBTQ and uh, people of color. And uh, I, you know, of course, it takes women funds to put their focus on that. And so that acceleration of those funds I know it's something I talk about on this show. I'm working on a documentary about that. You know, I think it's a, a time in history that we are starting to move the needle, but it's entities like yours that are going to help us, I believe, accelerate it. So um, thank you for this work you're doing. If someone is an entrepreneur and wants to get in touch with NASDAQ Entrepreneur Center, what what is it they can get from your center? What is it that you bring to the table for these entrepreneurs that is, I know, invaluable? Oh, thanks for asking that. I, so first and foremost, we'd invite them to come in and, and, and see our on-demand programming. It's all free. We don't charge for anything. We don't take any equity. It's one of the best deals out there, I promise them. Uh, and it's all built 
based on entrepreneurs sharing with us what their greatest challenges are. So we post that community of 70,000 entrepreneurs daily, weekly, and monthly in line with their programs that they're attending and ask them what more do they need our help with. And then our incredible program team goes out and sources the best experts that can help them overcome those challenges and really sustain themselves as founders, whether it's in wellness for themselves, whether it's through financial, whether it's through sales, whether it's through marketing, whatever the need areas are. Every month we're putting forward about 12 open programs that they're welcome to join in. And if they can't work with their schedule, they're all on demand on YouTube. So right now we have over 600 programs and classes that have been upranked by entrepreneurs in the community that have been sourced and shared and cultivated to be able to help them overcome these issue areas. We're also um, tackling a lot of systems level issues around the field of equitable entrepreneurship. So we have original research that we're conducting with a number of universities across the globe, honestly, things like increasing the flow of capital to our entrepreneurs of color, looking at pay ownership valuation disparities for our women entrepreneurs and how we make sure that we aren't seeing anymore a 70% lower valuation for women entrepreneurs than their male entrepreneurs of kind. And equally how we can help, you know, really close this wealth gap affecting, and we believe in a pull-up mechanism of what entrepreneurship stands like. So I'm a struggling entrepreneur, let's say. Uh, I find you as a resource. I go on there. I can find resources that could help me better organize my company, better fund my company, uh, uh, learn about resources that could support me maybe with like marketing exactly. is the type of resources that would be available absolutely these are all free classes uh think of it in some ways as sort of the ultimate ultimate source of library resources that your peers are sharing and and sourcing with you around issues that entrepreneurs are facing each and every day we also have on-demand mentorship so if you are needing some free tactical strategic support for your business you can go on to mentor makers which is a program that we stood up at the start of the pandemic when no one could network in the ways that they used to be able to do and actually make it much more accessible for entrepreneurs to book directly with subject matter experts for free time and free help in getting through these issue areas that they're struggling with, again, against any number of areas. And you can connect with mentors around the world. So one of the fun things to watch is as our entrepreneurs are starting to look at markets differently or curious around what might it be like if I changed where my supply chain or my talent network, or even where my customer bases are, you can directly connect in with communities in those areas and hear firsthand what the issues are, how to be successful, how to navigate through them. And knowing you're not alone in that is really helpful. Absolutely, because you a solopreneur just doesn't work. I say you have to have a village and this is a free village. This is amazing. Uh, so let's say they really needed to source a, a different manufacturer, a different distributor. They needed to get their product into a store or corporation. Is this something are these things you could help them with? Well, we're not going to be the ones that necessarily deal with the tactical final line of sight to some of those questions, but it's a great one to raise. What we are gonna help them with is think through sort of what is my go-to-market strategy or how do I identify what are the right decisions for me to make in sourcing these types of procurement needs. Um, giving them the matrix, it's like a teaching to fish kind of a moment, right? We wanna be able to empower people forever more to go forward and feel confident that this was the issue of today, but tomorrow they're in better shape to be able to overcome that type of issue as it presents itself in the future state. And we all know, unfortunately in entrepreneurship, you're never done with the problems. It's just you're sourcing new ones as you go through. Absolutely. But like you said, that's what keeps it exciting. That's right. That's what makes it never a dull day for sure. And so also too, whenever you surround yourself with other entrepreneurs, uh, there's a, a magic in that because uh, they often will share how they overcame certain uh, obstacles that you're maybe encountering yourself now as an entrepreneur, right? So that's why it takes a village. This person has solved this problem already that you're encountering now. And maybe you've, you know, come up with a solution for something they're having a problem with now that that's why that collaboration is so key, right? 
Yeah, six years later, 600 plus classes, what we've learned more often than not is the greatest learning happens when you're about 18 months ahead of someone to be able to support them in their learning journey. Meaning if you can make sure that you are connected to entrepreneurs who are just a little further ahead on your journey, you're really gonna be able to support one another as you continue to grow and expand your business and really reach towards your ideal dream of what you're building that business for in the first place. I love that. Well, with your background of actually having done this and also being so involved with what the angel investors are looking for, uh, you certainly are the ideal person to be running this entrepreneur center. And I'm so excited to share this with our listeners. What a wonderful resource. Um, how would they find you? Give us your website. Give us your social. Absolutely. The center.nasdaq.org. You can follow us everywhere at the center and we would love to welcome you into our community. You can sign up for the newsletter, be kept informed of all the classes, all the programs, all the original research coming out, um, join into one of the immersive programs that we have like milestone circles, which is only for women entrepreneurs. And we're just about to launch another 1200 women applications open for this next year, which is really exciting. We've already supported 550 women in the first year alone. And we have our Milestone Makers program, which is really celebrating uh, entrepreneurs across the globe who are working on UN SDG goals. So a number of program areas that we can support you. We like to feature incredible entrepreneurs doing amazing things. We have a number of original franchises like Faces of Entrepreneurship, which follows a very similar trajectory to Humans of New York. Everybody loves that blog, but it tells the story and really showcases the incredible opportunity of entrepreneurs and what they're doing for our communities and world. You were kind to say, I, I'm a great leader. I think at the end of the day, the team that works behind this is amazing. And above all else, we all are in support and service of the entrepreneurs who are making this world a better place. So it's an honor to be there for them, learning by them and building for them. I love that. Well, the NASDAQ Entrepreneur Center is a nonprofit and obviously has all these great, amazing free programs for everyone. So everybody listening, take advantage of that. Pass it on to other people that you know will benefit. Uh, follow them at the center on uh, social media. Um, I'm sure you can find Nicola like I did on LinkedIn. Um, and of course, you can find me there too. Of course, follow Invest in Her, Catherine Gray, Invest in Her at Instagram and all of our uh, social media, Twitter and Facebook um, and Instagram for She Angel Investors. Um, remember everybody to make an effort to invest in another woman and uh, reach out and help each other. Thank you so much, Nicola, for being a guest. Uh, everybody, make it a great week. Thank you so much. And remember to check out the Wealthy Women Summit put on by our podcast sponsor, The Bra Network. Here's a message from their founder, Carrie Murray. I know we've all been to hundreds of conferences. Just hearing the word conference and you can picture the lanyard and the name tag and the taste of cold coffee. You wrap up, you post on Instagram, maybe you get a swag bag. You leave thinking, well, now that I'm empowered, what's next? How does this help my growth, both personally and professionally? Well, it's time to change things up. It's time to shake things out. Prosperity plus abundance. Flourish plus consciousness. That is the Wealthy Women Summit. Set for August 25th and 26th in the beautiful Long Beach Harbor, right next to the Queen Mary, docked is the Sir Winston Yacht, because nothing says a conference about wealth than a conference that takes place on a yacht. We are going to be have panels and speakers and workshops on all the different decks, everything to help you cultivate a life that is more than just wealth meaning the money you have in the bank, but wealth in mind and body, wealth in leadership and growth, wealth in health, wealth in life. We want to provide you with a full experience of living a wealthy lifestyle. Now, I want you to head over to the wewosummit.com website. It's wewo, W-E-W-O, summit.com and use promo code invest to get 15% off your ticket to this very unique experience. See you this summer. Remember, if you're looking to launch a business or grow your business, check out our e-course, Six Ways to Fund Your Business, available at sheangelinvestors.com.
Our theme music was created and produced by Lindsay Tamar.